number four. I'm just not getting up. So I want you to be patient with me this morning. Um, what's really important is that you do get God's blessing. You get this whole worship service within your soul and your spirit. So be patient with me as we get through God's word. Um, so it can uh, bind you, fortify you, and, and, and give you the instruction uh, that you need in your life. When we look at a single meaning, uh, which does not uh, have to be limited to an object, concept, or word, when you see roses, red roses, growing in a garden, what comes to mind? Perhaps you think literally about the rose, about its petals, its stem, and its thorns, or even about its stamen and pistols, as a botanist might call it. But perhaps you might go elsewhere and start thinking about topics like romance, courtship, and Valentine's Day, which is around the corner. Why would this be so? A rose is simply a plant growing in dirt. The reason, of course, is that over the course of many generations, a rose's symbolic meaning has involved including enormous concepts. What is symbolism? Symbolism is a literary device that uses symbols by the words of people, marks, locations, or abstract ideas to represent something beyond the literal meaning. The concept of symbolism is not confined to works of literature. Symbols inhabit every corner of our life daily. For instance, the colors red, white, and blue typically symbolizes patriotism in America at its best or at its least which is why they are the favorite colors of a political yard sign or a political party. Colors like orange and brown signifies fall, which is why we adorn so many Thanksgiving decorations and events. Road signs, logos, and emojis are other examples of symbolism the visual correspondence to ideas, companies, or even moves. Today I want to talk to you about symbols in Christ's death. Why is that so important? Sometimes we get into a situation that everything becomes cliché. We come into worship service and sometimes we forget our way on why we come to worship. Why we serve on the table. I appreciate Brother Dixon giving a good explanation on why we give even twice. Why do we partake of the body and blood of Christ? And when I say it's so cliche, because it's like almost we just don't even remember or even forget on why we even come here and why we do what we do. But it is a reason. In the Bible, we find many symbols of Christ's death. Why is Christ's death so in particular to just concentrate on the symbolism of that where there are so many symbols in the Bible. Everything is so cliche, we look at symbols even in the Bible that it might be a problem. There's so many things 
things that are in the church today because our own unintelligent ways that everything is so tabooish now. We cannot talk about anything in the church, but we can talk about it at home, in government, and in the world, and at work. That's ridiculous. When all of what we talk about at home, at work, in public, in government, is in the Word of God. There's nothing as a child of God should not be able to talk about as long as it's in between Genesis and Revelation, you should talk about it and preach about it. If you're a child of God. And let me throw this out there. If you don't want to talk about what is from Genesis to Revelation, I would say throw it in your Christian car. You're in the wrong place. But at the right time, generally speaking, I would be all day dealing with symbols throughout the Bible. So I want to concentrate on symbols in Christ's death. Generally speaking, there are symbols in the Old Testament looking forward to Christ's death. And symbols in the New Testament looking back at what we are looking forward to. There are three major symbols or three major ideas or concepts I really want you to pay attention to within this lesson and the lesson to be yours. The first one is what we would call Old Testament types. A Greek word we call tupos, for us who study Greek and want to learn more about Greek. I even have a word number here for the Greek word, 5179, if you want it for your notes. Meaning type, symbol, figure, pattern. Is this in the Bible? Symbols? Patterns? Figures, when we look at Romans chapter 5 and verse 14, it says, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. We don't just throw away the Old Testament. I challenge you to read the whole book of Hebrews to get a better understanding on how the Old Testament is our schoolmaster. The Bible is right. The Bible is our instructions, our roadmap. That's all it is. God is trying to tell us that he wants us to take back what the devil has taken from him. I'm giving you the Bible in a nutshell. That's all God is trying to do. But the beauty about God, he always has a one up on everything he has created. That's all he's trying to do. And the beauty behind God, that he tried to get us to help to do what is needed to be done so we can stop serving the creation that he created, which is Satan himself. In Old Testament times, there are many persons, practices, objects, and events that were a kind of prophecy of Christ's death and the redemption and the reconciliation it will make possible. Here are a few examples to notice briefly of these shadows of things to come when we look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1. And I'm not going to read all these scriptures, but I want you to, I challenge you to write these scriptures down for further study. Don't just listen to me, brothers and sisters, but go home and study as well. 
I want you to fact check what I am saying. When we look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1, and Hebrews chapter 11 through 12, we look at animal sacrifices. When we look at Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 7, chapter uh, verse uh, 10, chapter 20 and chapter 20 uh, through 22, we look at the scapegoat. When we look at Numbers chapter 21, verse 5 through 9, in John chapter 3 and verse 14, we look at the serpent in the wilderness. When we look at 2 Kings chapter 18 and verse 4, we look at how things became idols. These are symbols. When we look at Matthew chapter 12 and verse 38 through 41, we look at Jonah and the big fish. When we look at Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 17, we look at Abraham offering up Isaac. These are symbols. These are shadows of things to come. Before I get into my next point, I want to drop this on you in respect to what I said earlier on the Bible in a nutshell of what God is trying to do. The beauty about God is that when he punishes you, you know what you're being punished for because if normally you're punished and disciplined based on what you have been doing. You wonder why everything is so symbolic and everything is so of a shadow in the Old Testament and everything is so physical that you can touch, that you can see, everything is so sacrificial, it's because Eve and Adam wanted to eat something that was of a physical nature. They needed their eyes to be open. It wasn't enough for God just to tell them, to instruct them, or to guide them. They needed more. So why do we, why did God spend from the patriarchal dispensation all the way up into the Christian dispensation showing us things to come. What are not, where am I going with this? We are living in a day and age as Christians today. We are spiritual. Just because we are in a physical world, you have to walk spiritual. That's the only way people is going to see us different from everybody else. I cannot say that enough. Symbols. And let me express this to you, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Why are these symbols so important to us? Yes, everybody in this world can read the Bible, but the unraveling, the decoding, of these symbols and the mystery of God is for us. We have the power to do what God expects us to do. What are we going to do? I made this comment to my class yesterday. I teach at Bill Rice. And they got, and, 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 uh, this is part of the lesson, but I want to share this with you. I tell my class this because they got on a situation about the historical aspect of the church. The Camelites, uh, 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 all of those folks in regards to the history of the church. I explained to them all of that, and some people feel like it's tame. It may be tame. How it came from Catholicism. How we see things whatever in the, in, in the Catholic faith on where we're at today. How we got to where we're at today. I express it on, that doesn't make a difference to me. If it's tainted, where it came from, all of those things. The question today, I ask you, what history are we going to make today? February 7th, 2021, for the generations to come. How is the generations to come going to look back at what did we do? I don't care what uh, 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 some of the people we don't even know, Jack Gavis, uh, and some of these folks who still live Billy really watch some of these name brand folks that's in the church, good people, good preachers. That's history. Go farther back in the church history to where we're at right now. 
question, what are we, how are we going to make history today to bring the shadow of things to come? What are we going to bring to come? The first thing is the New Testament. Well, what about the most important thing we do today? That is another thing that would be a symbol and sometimes folks disregard it, and that is baptism. So I want to give you three major things. Baptism, there are symbols of Christ's death in the New Testament too. Because the New Testament was written after the death, resurrection, and ascension of Christ, these symbols look back rather than into the future. Take, for example, the lamb standing as though slain in one of the visions given to John. When we look at Revelation chapter 5 and verse 5 through 6, it says, And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. In verse 6 it says, And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into in all the earth. Symbolism. But it's meant for us to decode it. If we want to. If we want to know the true meaning. There is, however, one symbol of Christ's death which our obedient believers into that enter into in order to benefit from the sacrificial death of Jesus and his resurrection. This is baptism. Paul shows us the meaning of baptism, what baptism represents. It symbolizes, let me help you to understand what baptism is all about. Because some folks think baptism is not essential to salvation. Because baptism is a symbol, 
that it is a merely a symbol and therefore is not uh, necessary to salvation, we all understand that it is the death of Jesus and his resurrection that saves us. And his body and his blood, not a pool of water, but that has the power to take away our sins. That's all symbolic. That's why we're sitting here. But we have to know how to encode that for the reality of our spirituality. The world doesn't understand that, but you should not walk out of here not understand that where you're at spiritual. The question is, however, when does the power operate for us? Paul answers this question in the most certain times. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Again, Romans chapter 6 and verse 3. The symbol is not the sacrifice, but the symbol provides the moment at which the sacrifice does its work. If you refuse or neglect the symbol, then you miss the moment in which you come into Christ's death. We are some powerful people. You have no idea what you have within you and what we can do to shape this world up. The last one, and the lesson is yours. The first one was understanding the Old Testament as being our schoolmaster, a shadow of things to come. The second was the most important of all, too, was baptism. Well, Brother Stuart, what is the third one? Brother Dixon just got through doing it. Sometimes we take so lightly, and that's the Lord's Supper. Why are these so important for me to teach you? I literally, literally had a conversation with a young man that his preacher told him that they used to baptize, but they don't baptize anymore because he, he feels as though it's not essential to salvation, so they don't do it anymore. God didn't change it. He changed it. And he changed it, guess what? Because the world is different. Not only that he didn't change, not only that they don't baptize anymore, but they don't do the Lord's Supper. Let me show you how important the Lord's Supper is to us. So you don't get those inclinations and that mindset to usher that in into the church. Another New Testament symbol of Christ's death is the Lord's Supper. The bread is a symbol. Here we go with symbols. You have to understand this. Follow me where I'm going with this. The bread is a symbol of the Lord's body, sacrificed on the cross. The cup of the fruit of the vine is a symbol of the Lord's body, shared for the forgiveness of sins. Those are symbols. What you see in those plates are symbols. That cracker that took me I don't know how long to open up. <laughs> with y'all later. This is not going to laugh or matter. This is serious. This is laughing because I took me a long time to get it open. But it's symbolic. It's not about me trying to open that up. It's about me taking it and what it represents. I'm stressing this to you, brothers and sisters, because people don't look at it as a representation. They look at it as a demonic representation that we literally are eating God's body. We're literally eating Jesus Christ's body. Are you serious? You can understand one passage of scripture that God is a spirit. But in another passage, you look at things that are so physical and cannibalism. Where's your mindset is at? Everything we do is spiritual. It is symbolic for a reason. Because everything is not to be decoded by everybody. Because if it was decoded by everybody, look at the chaos we have in the world today. Yes, the Bible could be for everybody, but the decoding of the symbolic or the symbolism of it or the mystery of it is for you. It's yours. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ, this is yours. You have the power to do it. There were physical priests in the Old Testament. We're spiritual. 
Jesus Christ. It's not the Catholic priest. It's not what the Catholics do. It's you. I'm stressing this because we have so much power in God to change us, change the world. But look at us. Scattered. Don't want to come to worship with our own intent, our own wicked ways because of what the world says and what the world puts in front of us. 1 Corinthians, this is very passionate for me. It might not be for you, but it's for me. And I have a job to do what God, God has called me to do. That's who I work for. I'm retained by you. But I work for God. So I got to do what I got to do. And I want you to share in that passion because you are part of my body, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 and 26, it states very clearly, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Verse 24 says, And when he had given thanks, he break it and take it. Listen to me now. Listen, listen, listen to what we quote all the time. Jesus says, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Listen, this is what sometimes we fail to realize and understand about this passage of scripture while we do what we do. This is not no cliche or just something we just come here and just do. But listen to this. It says, This do in remembrance of me. Do you get it in remembrance of me? That's Jesus Christ. That's why we do what we do. Oh, it gets better. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he has supped, said, this cup is the New Testament. He died. It's the New Testament. He's the New Testament. This is all symbolic, but it is a representation, and it's a remembrance of Jesus Christ for what he has done for you. This cup is the New Testament on blood. This do ye as often as ye as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For often, see, this is the part you need to really pay attention to in regards to the Lord's Supper, when you got folks out there in the world saying this is not essential. So that means as often. That's why we do it every first day of the week. So we can, when we come together, now I can take that body and blood of Christ at home if I want to. But when we come to collectively, as in this corporate worship, that's what we call it. That's why we do it every first day of the week. How dare you come into the worship service of God, so to speak, and don't give him what he expects you to give him. And that's simply said, thank you, and to remember him by these things I said before you. How dare you say this is not essential? And you, and I'm gonna tell you, it's like I told the guy, you have to be the most dumbest person to be under somebody to listen to that when the word of God tells you otherwise. And you turn around and say you believe in God? How dare you? That's why I sit there as I sit back and I'm very technical when people say I believe in God, I serve God, I do what God says. But you serve a man over here, and then you turn around and you want to pray to my God? Who you pray to? When the Bible tells you otherwise, when you sit at home doing whatever you want to do, when we all sit here worshiping, and you're not even worshiping at home, you're not even studying the Word of God. This is very passionate to me. And it also should be passionate to you. But I know some of you probably say, you know, please hurry it up. Because I got the world to worry about when I leave out of here. I hope none of you is not thinking like that. I'm finished. Again, we should not confuse a symbol with what it represents. The bread is not Christ's body, nor does the cup contain his blood. We know good and well that is not Jesus Christ's blood in there. We know good and well that is not his actual body in there. It's symbolic. 
they go go in. How so symbolic? Help me and make it applicable, Brother Stewart. How symbolic when I take it, it corresponds with my spirituality. It's not for me to get full of love. It does not correspond with my actual physical body. It corresponds with my spirituality, because when it corresponds with my spirituality, that my spirituality corresponds with my body. Because everything starts on the inside first. What we eat and drink at the Lord's Supper in, is this a emblem or symbol. When Jesus instituted the supper and held out food and drink, the disciples would know. When they heard him say, he said this, this is my body, this is my blood, that he was giving them symbols for a memorial supper. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. If I showed you a photo of my mother and said, this is my beautiful mother. God bless her soul, I miss her dearly. You would know what it was, a photo picturing my mother and helping me to do what? To remember her. We should understand that very clearly. We should participate in the Lord's Supper week by week to help us do what? Remember Jesus for what? Who died for your sins, my sins, and guess what? The whole entire world. But here's the thing about the whole entire world. All is not all, but you have, I'm at the invitation right now. So we have a job to do. Not just sit here, but go out into the world and teach others also. Jesus Christ died on the cross. He was buried. And he rose again on the third day. Having all power given to him in heaven, and in earth. Believe the same. Repent of your sins. Confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Go down in the water here with baptism. Put on Christ. Here's another symbol for you. Not to put away the filth of the flesh, but a true good answer to a clear conscience towards me, God Almighty. If you believe that, if you want to hear to that, be baptized today. If you're a child of God and you stray away on your Christian walk, your Christian journey, and we will, take this time and this opportunity to rededicate your life back to God as we together stand and sing the song of invitation. Come.